intended to give you an idea of what Cauldron was like. I'm not going to talk about the trial's results, which you can read about in the report, but just try and give you an idea of how we did things. Cauldron was, in effect, an extreme simplification of harness. By using a pontoon as a fixed floating layout, we were able to reduce our requirements from two ships and a shore base to a single ship for everything. An essential part of this plan was the very close contact with MRD. The corridor was, so to speak, extended by the aircraft provided by the RAF, which linked the department with the trials site. Here is the pontoon moored in the bay north of Stornoway. And in another rather shaky air shot, you can catch a glimpse of Ben Lomond, the anchor. The whole idea depended on the use of the spud pierhead pontoon, originally built for Mulberry. I want to show you a few diagrams of the pontoon so that you can get the general idea. The pontoon is 200 feet long and 60 feet wide and it's about 10 feet deep. It normally floats with about 7 feet of freeboard as you can see in this end view. To put it into a state suitable for wind flow, the center line tanks are filled with water which sinks the pontoon down until the freeboard is reduced from seven feet to about three feet. The wing tanks are then flooded. This has the effect of tilting the pontoon over until the surface slopes at about one in ten and the windward edge is level with the water. The wind can now flow smoothly from the sea onto this gentle slope and up it. This flooding and listing are done by machinery in compartments below deck. There are three 60 kilowatt diesel generators and three 350 ton pumps as well as a lot of other equipment. Looking down on the layout, you can see that we had an arc of sampling positions with its center at the source, which was held on a floating boom 25 feet long. The radius of the arc is 75 feet. And the appropriate part is fitted up with animals and sampling gear for each trial. If necessary, the pontoon can be swung to adjust it to the wind direction. One of the breast wires is eased off and the other pulled in. This can be done at both ends. In August 1951, we held preliminary trials in Sandown Bay, Isle of Wight. The pontoon had been towed back from Malta and our invaluable constructor, Mr. Vincent, had, not without apprehension, flooded and listed it successfully at Portsmouth. You can see here the pontoon with the full list on. And also the temporary sampling arc, which was rigged for these trials. The uh, Porton engineer and naval constructor in consultation. These preliminary trials were intended to prove the general principle and were fully satisfactory. In October and November 51, Ben Lomond and the pontoon went into dockyard hands at Chatham. The pontoon required extensive work and Ben Lomond had to be modified quite a bit for her new job. Meanwhile, special stores and equipment were being designed and made and assembled at MRD. Work continued until the CNC's inspection on the 23rd of April, 1952. We had in all eight officers and 132 ratings, as well as the 11 scientific staff 
and six men of the Royal Army Veterinary. This, by the way, was fewer than the compliment for Ben Lomond alone on harness. As soon as the inspection was over, the dockyard returned for final work, which was pushed through as rapidly as possible. We were pleased with the modifications, which were, on the whole, very satisfactory. Storing began, and in fact was nearly finished, before dockyard work was completed. This gave rise to some difficulty. Time should be allowed to avoid this, and to give the ship's company opportunity for working out. Unpacking went on in the laboratories as stores were received. and before stowing for passage, the items were checked. In the animal hold, trials equipment, animal exposure units and their transit boxes are being stowed. The ship moved out to a buoy a week before sailing for fumigation which was most successful. We were completely free from rats and cockroaches. The last stores taken on board were guinea pigs, here being brought to the ship's side door and into the clean hold. Later consignments came from Porton by aircraft to Stornoway. Conditions in the animal holds were good, with excellent ventilation and temperature control. We had no deaths on the clean side. Temperature was kept at 65 Fahrenheit or a little lower as far as possible. Pelleted food was kept in large hoppers with valves at the bottom. We had space for about six tons of guinea pig food and one and a half tons of monkey food. The animals also got fresh green stuff. Water was dispensed from a multiple filler dealing with five bottles at a time. The normal ship's supply of distilled seawater was used. Water bottles being fixed to the guinea pig trays, each of which held eight pigs. We had room for 2,400 pigs and 100 monkeys on the clean side, and the same in the dirty hold. The monkeys lived in individual cages. The day before sailing was devoted to a thorough cleaning of the lab area which was attacked with great vigour and some heartfelt comment. We sailed on the 5th of May, the last motorboat being hoisted at Chatham before we went downstream to Sheerness. These motorboats were used on the site during the trials, particularly as control boat and what we called the taxi boat for the pontoon engineers' party. They proved, in general, very satisfactory. Though hoisting them uh, wasn't as easy as this when the sea was rough, a frequent source of anxiety. On the way downstream, we passed Campania, due shortly to leave for the Montebello atomic trial. last stores were taken on board at Sheerness. And we set off. Quietly at first, with warm sun that was rare enough later in the year. The captain shows amusement at the engineer's expense. At first, work in the lab was easy, but the ship began to roll, and it became increasingly difficult to carry on with preparing the laboratory equipment. We met a heavy beam swell. It was, however, possible to do some washing and sterilizing of glassware, but when we found that the ship could roll quite a lot, even anchored at the site, 
it became necessary to take special measures about our anchoring position. These measures were fortunately very successful. The uh, cauldron mark one and lab staff getting a new slant on the situation. And so, on the afternoon of the 8th of May, we arrived. And the site looked very nice indeed in the sunshine, with a gentle breeze blowing, as we came in to our first anchorage. Later on, we went further in, very close indeed to the cliffs. And so we anchored for the first of many times. In the shelter, such as it was, of cellar head, which gave us some protection from the northerly swell. A motorboat was very soon in the water. Two hours later, we had our first taste of the vagaries of the weather in this locality, for it was necessary to hoist the boat again because of rising wind. So here we were, with this pontoon, ready to find out how best to use it, and then to put it to use. Starve in an incinerator here. I'm now going to follow through the actual operations in detail. The first stage in preparation is boxing of animals for exposure. This job is started about a couple of hours before the first bomb is fired. That is, about an hour before we load the boat and go to the pontoon. The guinea pig unit was designed for cauldron. It was made to hold up to ten pigs and two impingers. The animal is held by the neck with the head exposed. The units are carried forward and stacked by the place where assembly will be finished by fitting the sampling apparatus, that is, the impingers, and fresh trays are brought to the boxing point. The requirements for a day's trials was of the order of 225 guinea pigs, that is, 45 of these frames with five pigs each, which we found a suitable number at each point. The units are handed up to the table where impingers are fitted. The impingers have already been prepared in the laboratory. Here, they are fitted into the frames and their rubber connecting tubes are attached. The unit is now complete and ready to go in its place on the sampling arc on the pontoon. The frames are put into a transit box which is closed and hoisted onto a platform. From here the boxes are carried through a passage to the lobby and so to the ship's side door. The boxes come through the side door and are loaded into the control boat. By hand occasionally, you can see here, or more often by a hoist worked from the deck above. This operation took about ten minutes. You can see here the ample stowage space in the boat. The trial team now joins the control boat. Three lab staff, three vets and the radio officer make up the pontoon team of seven. The trials officer, naval officer and meteorologist stay in the control boat during the trials. The boat goes to the pontoon, a little less than a mile away,